How's it going guys? Today we've got a fun one in After Effects. We're going to be showing you how to create this effect from Taylor Swift in Post Malone Fortnite. There's not much else to say, so let's get ready to hop into After Effects. As always, if you're new, subscribe for more guides and tutorials. Comment what you want to see from this channel next and leave a like for the YouTube algorithm if you'd like to support. So let's quickly break down some of the key elements of what we're going to need to do in After Effects. We have this sort of wipe away that brings in the actual tattoo. So we're going to have to do a little bit of masking. We're also going to have to create some sort of track, as you can see, as her face is distorting when she presses against it with the cloth. The tattoos are also reacting to that. So let's create a new project here in After Effects. And I found this stock footage from Pexels.com. We can just drag this in to a new composition. Now let's just scroll a bit and find a spot that's going to work for us. Now I do want to keep in mind here, if you are going to do a fully track sequence uh, with multiple wipes, multiple tattoos staying in place, something like this, like 20 seconds of that, that is going to take you a lot of time and a lot of work tracking, masking, making sure everything is as seamless as possible. This music video probably had a multi-million dollar budget and even then there's still a tiny bit of distortion. It still looks great. Uh, you're not going to notice unless you go frame by frame. So yeah, don't let that discourage you. I'm just going to show you one simple wipe here, and then you can take those steps, repeat that as many times as you'd like if you want. So we're going to do this wipe across her face. We want to find the part on the timeline right before the reveal is going to happen. So right about there. Let's go ahead and click Control Shift D just to split the layer right here. And then if you want, you can rename this beginning part to something like intro, and then we can rename this top part to effect. So let's scroll for however long we want the effect to last, and then we'll drag the timeline here to the end, right click, and then trim the comp to the work area, just so we have a nice and clean little easy composition here. What I'm going to do is go up and grab my masking pen tool, and I'm just going to draw a simple little handmade mask like this. Next, you can click M on your keyboard just to show the mask options. For now, we're just going to set this for none so we can really see what we're doing. And then we're also going to set a little keyframe for the mask path. So now you can click page up and page down on your keyboard just to move frame by frame. So I'm going to move a little bit and then I'm going to click on the mask here. If you didn't know, if you select the layer itself, you're going to have full spline control like this. But if you only select the mask, it allows you to move the entire mask as one, which is pretty nice to know. So let's just move the entire mask over and then we can go back and just make those tiny little adjustments. So because we have our keyframe set, we now have a little animation of our mask just moving across. Let's repeat those, move a bit and just adjust the mask. And now for the rest of it, if you'd like, we're just kind of moving across. You can just right click on your mask down here and select track mask and then click play to see if we get a decent result for the rest of it. So that works for me. Let's now set the mask from none over to subtract so that we're actually cutting away from this layer. Now we're going to bring in our tattoo. And again, you can do this in any other fashion. Maybe you want to track something onto something that isn't a face. Use the steps however you'd like. I'm just going to try and recreate from that original music video here. So I found this little tattoo sheet. I'm just going to, again, create another mask. And we'll just do something like this. And then I'm going to position this inside of this cutaway that we've created before. So I'll click R to rotate, S to scale. You want to make sure that this is inside the actual area of the mask. All right, so next we need to track lock this onto a warping surface. And for this, I know of three methods. Number one is the free method and the other two are paid plugins. So I'm of course going to be showing you the free method, but if you want, I'm going to leave some resources and links to the plugins that'll show you how to set them up and use them for this workflow below. So a quick mention of the plugins. The first one is Mocha Pro. I think the license for that is around $300. You want the pro version to use their mesh tracking feature, which can lock and distort with the shape of the face. The second is the lockdown plugin, which I'm not too familiar with, but it essentially looks like it does the same as the Mocha mesh tracking. Again, I'm pretty sure it's around $200 or $300. So take all of that into account when you do this. So with that out of the way, let me show you how to do the free method without any plugins, just using things within After Effects. So what we want to do is just trim this layer to only be one frame. So we're going to move one frame, click Control Shift D, and then delete this part. So it should only pop up for one instance like this. Next, what you want to do is you're going to want to right click on this layer. Let's rename this real quick to Tattoo. 
right click on this, go to pre-compose, and you want to move all attributes into this new composition and click OK. So once you've done that, it should kind of create this longer pre-comp. Again, we only need that one frame. To make this easier, you can just double click in here. It'll show you where on the timeline you need to make that cut. So Control Shift D and it's back to how it was before. So the reason why we pre-compose this is so that we could go into the pre-comp. So we'll double click. Here's what it's looking like. We just want to right click in this gray area, go down to new and create a new solid. We're going to create a black solid and then just drag this as a layer beneath the tattoo. Now we can go back to our main comp. We can just take this tattoo layer and drag it beneath our normal footage so that it's within the mask like this. And now we're ready to actually create the track lock. So we're going to select the effect layer. We're going to go up to window. And then we're going to go down to content aware fill. That should open up this menu over here. You just want to click on this option box here, go to content aware fill settings and make sure create Photoshop sequence for output is checked on. The range for this is set to work area. So what we can do is we can take the work area here and only set it to the area that we want to track lock, which is right here. Make sure you're doing this part here because if not, and you're trying to generate a layer for like a 20 second clip, it's going to take a long time and most likely crash after effects. Go ahead and click generate fill layer and we could just name this whatever. After Effects will go in and analyze and create this content aware fill for us. And here are our results. Again, you guys could always just try a different reference layer. It may take a little bit of tweaking until you get it how you want it. I think this is fine. The main thing that we want is it's tracked onto the face and it's distorting whenever the face is changing. So now we're obviously going to need to do a lot of cleanup. So we're going to get rid of this black background around the text first by going to our effects and presets and searching for a color key. We can set the color to black like this and then just bump up the color tolerance to get rid of some of that. You can also add a simple choker effect just to clamp the black color a little bit more. Next, you want to go down to your blending modes here and change this to multiply. And then you can go back to the mask on the original footage and just set it from subtract to none. Once you've done that, the rest is just doing a bit of masking cleanup. So I'm going to draw another mask around my text and again, animate it like we did with the first mask. And I'll just make some keyframes to reveal that text as the wipe happens. Now, as you can see at the beginning here, we don't want that mask to be showing from the start because things are a bit scrunched up. So you can also set a keyframe for the mask expansion, start it in the negative so that you can't see anything, and then set a little keyframe so that it'll slowly fade in and it'll look a lot nicer. Now we're still getting a bit of distortion here. So this next tip is going to help you a ton, and that is by adding some blur. So we're going to add a Gaussian blur effect here, and we're going to also add some keyframes just so at the start when everything is all scrunched up, it is very blurry. And then as the text is revealed a bit more, it's a little bit less blurry. And that's really about it for the cleanup from here. It's really just about blending the tattoo with the skin a bit better for that. You can slap on a curves effect. If you really want to see the detail through the tattoo, you can also use a Luma mat. Because I slapped on this black and white effect, I didn't think it was that necessary. Again, blurring is your best friend. You want this to blur so that it looks more natural. Once everything is said and done, here is the final look. The masking cleanup took me about seven minutes to add the blurring and the color correction, probably another seven minutes. So all in all, 15 minutes of cleanup, which really is not that bad, especially when you're considering $300 plus to license some of these fancier plugins. If you are doing a full face with multiple tracking, multiple maskings, are those plugins going to help you? Probably yes. I would recommend you look into those. But is it possible to do it without plugins? Yes, 100% using this method. If I really wanted to, I'm sure I could go in and do the entire face. It would just take me probably a couple of hours. And for a tutorial like this, I don't think it's necessary. So if you did enjoy the tutorial, like I said at the beginning, likes are always appreciated for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any other ideas or you want to see me break down a specific video or effect, let me know down in the comments. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.